Well, thank you everybody for coming. I think I know pretty much everybody, everybody here, but for those that don't know, I'm the president of the Lexington Historical Society. I have that distinct honor, and it has been a, a strange two years. Uh, as you know, that this was supposed to happen last year, but because of that uh, COVID, uh, we're finally having it, having it now. Um, I'm going to take a little poetic license with a famous quote and say that uh, this is a, what a glorious day for Lexington. Uh, because this has been something that has been in the works, as you know, for many, many years. Uh, I'm going to let Carol uh, thank the many, many wonderful people and donors that have, have brought into this. This is going to be the gem, one of the gems of our town. Um, we've always needed a place to, to, to store our many archives and valuable objects. We have that now. Uh, temperature controlled. We have a research center as well, so it's not just an archives for people that are going to be using it. We're hoping internationally even. I know Elizabeth has said she's already done Zoom with about 100 to 150 people that have, have asked for research from, this, from the, uh, the center. And um, I'm just extremely excited and, and feel uh, blessed to be able to, uh, to present that today. So um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce everybody to our new uh, executive director, Carol Ward. Uh, the only thing I have against Carol is she's from New York, but um, but we got our revenge the other day, didn't we? <laughs> that's right, that's right. So uh, you know, Bucky leaping dent, forget it. The, the curse is over now. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Carol. Carol. For those of you that I've met for the first time today, thank you so much for the honor that I really feel like it is an honor to be able to lead Lexington Historical Society into the next phase of the amazing organization that it is already. Um, people that have kind of seen my resume, I come with 20 years of experience. I do contemporary art, I do historic art, I do everything that you guys are gonna want me to do, I hope. And I hope that I honor the traditions and we're gonna have Susan speak in a little while and Erica who couldn't be here today. And I'm so honored to be the next woman director because women directors are the best. <laughs> Um, in the line of the Historical Society. And so I have to thank some people. So I'm going to thank our donors first, our major donors. So I've got John and Claire Bertucci who are over here. So if I say your name, if you can raise your hand. Thank you so much. Howard Woke, who could not be here with us today, but amazing donor as well. Thomas Taylor, Richard Pageant, who I, where is Richard? There you go, awesome, thank you so much. Joseph and Molly Nye, and Joanne Geschwentner, who could not be with us as well. And no organization could be the organization that it is without our board of trustees. So if you're a board of trustees member, please raise your hand and take a round of applause. Excellent. If you are a volunteer at the society, please raise your hand and take a round of applause. Excellent. And last but certainly not least, the amazing staff of the Historical Society. When I came for my final interview, I had three things that I was kind of looking at to, to decide if I was going to take the job. The board, the houses themselves, and the staff. Because no organization can do what it does without its staff. So, Amy, Sarah, <laughs> James, who is still with us partly, Elizabeth, Stacy and Chris, please give a big round of applause for the staff. And an extra round of applause for Elizabeth and Stacy for putting together the amazing space that we're about to see. And now, I would like to turn it over to Sue Rockwell, who, I don't know what Sue doesn't do here. Um, I have been, I sat with Sue on a very rainy Monday this past Monday with our golf classic with the Bertucci's and we talked about everything from high school reunions to dating to how hardy golfers are so Sue please take it away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I give you my few little remarks I do want to read you a message from Howard Wolk, one of our um, major donors. He had a flimsy excuse that he couldn't be here because he's in England for a year. <laughs> so anyway, he wrote to us, I would like to convey how proud and happy I am to have been able to support this project. 
how easy and pleasurable it was to work with the historical society in all facets, and how magnificent the final product is, from design to construction. Candace and I were lucky to get a quick tour before we left, and it really is a great and important addition to the Lexington legacy. So that's from Howard. Now, uh, I've been around the society a long time. My first uh, exposure to the archives was to go down into the basement of the Hancock-Clark house. At one end in the vault was Larry Whipple with a lot of books and papers. At the other end was Ann Ireland with a lot of stuff. And in the middle was kind of a no man's land. Uh, they each had a little problem with each other. Uh, complained about each other, and the funny thing is they were both right about the things they said. But they both did their job, they were volunteers, we had no staff, and they did what they had to do. But, very small space, in the basement, one entrance and exit up and down, one set of stairs, very scary. We were there for a long time. Over the years, we talked about we really need to have a different space for the archives and the curatorial. This is not good. At one time, when the stone building first became available, we thought maybe the archives could be in that building and we could use part of it for exhibition space for East Lexington stuff, reading room. We could do something like that. It didn't pass muster with the library trustees, so that didn't work. Then we thought, well, okay, now the town's talking about the Hosmer House. Okay, let's move the Hosmer House and bring it over here to Monroe Tavern. No. <laughs> it was going to be too much money. It wasn't going to work. Nobody, officials didn't like the idea, so we thought, all right, the heck with this, we're going to have to do something ourselves. Where can we put an archives? Can we put it at the Hancock-Clark house? Well, the topography there, the geology there, it won't work. All right, we have the Monroe Tavern. This was a place where there were lots of different buildings. There were additions. There was a Masonic Hall here, which was huge. There were a lot of things happening here. Why not? bring back that activity to Monroe Tavern. So that's what we decided to do. Susan's going to tell you about the various plans and things that went into it. We got through the town very well and then things got a little messy, which Susan's going to talk about. So I have brought you up to here. Now Susan's going to bring you full circle to tonight. Okay, Susan Bennett. So, um, after the Society embraced the vision of a dedicated archive space here, I would say the least complex part of the process was the design because we had a very limited footprint in which to work. Yes, Tom, I'll speak up. Uh, and we didn't want to overwhelm the historic tavern. That was very important so that the visibility of the street from the street would remain the same. So yes, you know, we went through various iterations, but what became much more complex was the regulatory process that we ended up going through. And I, I think a lot of people who weren't intimately involved with the project didn't realize the multi- uh, multi-year angst that we went through to bring the project to fruition. Um, along the way that included the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Historic Districts Commission, the National Park Service, the Town Manager and Board of Selectmen, the Land Court, the Attorney General's Office, and the Probate Court. We ran through every process that you could possibly encounter with a historic building. And I want to say that Sue was my partner through countless hours of hearings, meetings, court appearances, and strategy sessions with outside counsel. In fact, 
At one point, I was going to recommend that we form a law firm, Rockwell and Bennett, <laughs> and just, you know, go into business. Um, and I have to say that it was her wisdom, her patience, and her persistence that was ultimately key to our success. Plus, she prevented me from jumping off bridges on multiple occasions <laughs> when things got too tough. Um, and I also want to say that we owe thanks to Ed McCarthy and to Paul Ross, who were quiet contributors along the way. Ed on the legal side and Paul ever supportive on the, um, our friends at the Historic Districts Commission. So today, we're celebrating the completion of this wonderful archive center. I'd like to suggest, though, that this is really the icing on the cake of a decade and a half of sustained capital investment by the society. During that time, we raised and spent upwards of $5 million to put all of the society's buildings in the superb condition that they are today. And we did all that while restoring the society to financial stability and growing a professional staff. That, it's a, a collective achievement in which I think we can all take pride. There are, though, two people who deserve the most credit for this success on the capital side. They were there at the inception and at the conclusion. They never wavered from the task. And it was a privilege for me to work as a team with David Wells and Lester Savage on this wonderful journey. So thank you both for all you've done. And I mean, it was wonderful. <laughs> I loved it. Finally, I think the society is truly poised to make the Archive Center an asset, not only for the Lexington community, but for the history world beyond. With Mary Keenan ably chairing the Collections Committee, a seasoned staff, and an energetic new director, I see great things ahead and I will be applauding your, you every step of the way. Thank you. All right, so now we're gonna do the ribbon cutting and I would like Mary, Elizabeth, and Stacy to come up with me to do the ribbon cutting, please. Yeah. 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 Yeah.